Okay, today will be the final lesson of our unit on induction. Remember the goal of this unit is to move electrons using a magnetic field. And the big thing we want to take away from the last lesson was the idea of flux. We looked at it in terms of solar flux because I think that's easy to understand. The solar flux was the amount of energy being absorbed by the solar panel. And the way that we've calculated this was by multiplying the area times the solar constant times the cosine of our angle. Now, when we look at generating electricity from magnetism, we're going to be using a coil of wires and a magnetic field. Think of the coil like the solar panel. Think of the magnetic field lines as the sunlight. And then our idea with flux will be the same as it was before. So we have flux, the symbols phi, it's measured in a unit called Weber's. And just like our solar flux, it depends on the strength of the magnet, that's like our solar constant, multiplied by the area of the coil of wires, multiplied by the angle between those two. Okay, so here's the big idea. It's not flux that creates electricity. It's change in flux. So the big idea is that voltage, electromotive force, comes from a change in flux. And the faster the flux changes, the greater the voltage that you will generate. It does not matter how strong the flux is. It matters how quickly that flux is changing. So we did an experiment and we saw that some things made the light bulb light up and some things did not. If we look at those things again, I hope you'll realize that every time the light bulb was lit, it was because the flux was in the process of changing. So you'll notice as soon as the coils enter the field, the light comes on because we are increasing the area that is being affected by the magnetic field. Once the entire coil is in there, the light shuts out because there is no change in area. As the coil starts to leave the field, we once again get a change in area being affected by the magnetic field. So it's not the area that's important. It was important that the area was changing. The big idea today is it's changing flux that creates the electricity. Okay, so if I have part of the coil in the magnetic field and I move the coil up and down, I don't get any electricity, even though the coil's moving, because the amount of area in the magnetic field is not changing. So again, it's not flux, it's change in flux. Here you can see we're getting more and more area, so the light is on. Now we're going to move the coil vertically again, and even though the flux is maximum, it's not changing. So as I moved it vertically up and down, we get absolutely no electricity because there is no change in flux. Okay, with this next one, we're going to flip our magnet. And for the moment that the magnetic field is changing, we get electricity. If we vary our magnetic field in a more continuous pattern, we can get our light being on all the time. Okay, so again, we can change the area or we can change the magnetic field. So again, flux, magnetic field times area. If you change either one of them, that will give you a change in flux and that will give you electricity. Remember that it's not just magnetic field and area, but it's also the angle. So as we rotate, and this turns out to be the most convenient way of generating electricity, in all of our generators and alternators, we're just going to spin our coil of wires because by changing the angle, we change how much flux is passing through that coil of wires. 
So the easiest, best way of generating electricity using magnetisms is to spin your coil of wires. Again, you're changing your flux, so you are getting electricity. And it turns out that the amount of voltage, remember this electromotive force just means voltage, is equal to how quickly the flux is changing. So it's the rate of change of flux. The negative just tells you the direction of the voltage. And as we saw with Lenz's law, the generated voltage always goes against the change in flux so that you don't have a perpetual motion machine. This voltage will try to slow down the rate of rotation instead of making it increase. It's kind of like a frictional force. Okay, once you have your voltage, you plug it into Ohm's law and you're good to go. So generally, you have a magnet with a really strong magnetic field. You put your coils between the north and south, and then you just rotate it. And as it rotates, you're gonna be generating electricity. You're gonna tap into that electricity, and that's how we power our homes. And believe it or not, that's how we recharge the batteries in our cars. So all of our main sources of electricity are generated by spinning coils in a magnetic field. Okay, you'll notice here is a graph showing the amount of voltage we get as we spin our coils in a magnetic field. The blue line represents the flux. The red line represents the voltage. And you'll notice that they do not go hand in hand. When you have a large amount of flux, you have zero voltage because your slope of this graph is going to be zero. It's not the flux that's important. It's the rate at which the flux is changing. You can see at this point, we have our maximum voltage, and that's because we have our steepest line the flux is changing most rapidly. So I want you to realize one more time that the amount of voltage you get is not dependent on your flux, but on the flux changing. The faster it changes, the greater the voltage you're able to create. All right, I know this wasn't an ideal situation, but this is the last major idea of the year and it's the idea that we can generate moving charges by using a magnetic field. We need to have a changing flux to generate the voltage. And again, this is a really important idea used to generate almost all the electricity that you've dealt with in your life, whether it's in your home or whether it's in your car. All right, I hope you guys understood all this and I wish you the best.